Minneapolis, Minnesota. A rather large town on the shores of an even larger river. Being connected at the peak of the Mississippi right before it hits the butt-ass end of Canada, Minneapolis was a thriving hub of culture and industrialism throughout the 1800s to modern day. One thing that we all know about Minneapolis is it still continues to grow, and as a result, it's seen a lot of interesting and creative faces. People like Al Capone, and the legends of his speakeasies and his weird little parties that he'd have in the Wabasha Caves out in St. Paul. Or the legends of Bob Dylan in his shitty little apartment in Dinkytown above the old drugstore. But there's a part of Minneapolis that not a lot of people know about. Not unless they're already a part of it, they know someone else who is. And what part of Minneapolis is that, you might ask? It's the history of Minneapolis punk rock. If you're a woman or a man Today on TC Underground, we'll be following my good friend Wilder Burnham on a quest to sell and promote his independently published magazine, Out of Context. Out of Context is a collection of stories and art and poetry and just overall general personal things about Wilder and other people that submit to the zine. We're going to go around to some iconic and key locations and meet some people along the way. And in the process, we'll be talking about the history of Minneapolis punk and all the cool places that we've been to as kids and the kind of stuff that formed us into the people that we are today. So let's go with Wilder right now and check it all out. So I'm in the car right now with my buddy Wilder Burnham, who is in the process of dropping off his zine. What's your zine, man? Uh, it's called. It's called Out of Context. It's just like an art magazine, story magazine, just like stories from my trip to Portland and also stories that my, some of my friends wrote. It's a pretty awesome zine. I don't know. I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be cruising around to some pretty iconic places here in the cities and dropping these off today and kind of just cruising around with Wilder while he does his thing. So hopefully I won't fucking get in a car accident. <laughs> While staring at the camera and the fact that we totally cannot see through this windshield at all. Yeah, I know. My car's a piece of shit. The, the heat doesn't work ever. <laughs> but it decided to work today, which is pretty rad. Oh, and okay. I'm gonna turn this way. So talk a little bit about um, your time at the Doughboy. Man, that was like the best time of my life so far. Just like. It was the craziest, the craziest things happened there, like, I don't know, man. It was fucking ridiculous. How many people did you guys have living in the house at one time? Um, I think the most we had was like 13 to 14. We had a lot, of, we had a lot of travelers staying there. It's kind of bullshit. I hate travelers, to be honest. Like, they really annoy me. Oogles. Total oogles? 
fucking Oogle City for a while. <laughs> Kids with pickle bags and dogs that are like more fed than they are and shit. Yeah, this one, <laughs> this one time I came home and the Oogle's dogs had gotten in the trash and like two or three of the Oogle's girl, Oogle girls were like on their periods so like there's just like period blood, nasty fucking shit everywhere, all over the floor. There was shit on the floor, it was just awful. Where the magic happened. The fucking crazy shit magic. Wizard magic? Wizard magic. <laughs> I used to skate at this park in this parking lot all the time. Oh look, there's somebody oh it's a kid. There's a kid on the porch. <laughs> Is that the old way? Yep. What's up dude? Hi house. Pretty much the reason why we got that house was because there was extreme noise stickers everywhere. There was like some on the mailbox, there was some like on the on the fridge. And later we found out that it used to be a, a punk house before we even like lived there. It was this place called the Outer Limits, like uh pretty sure Calvin like stayed there, Ratboy lived there for a while. Um Todd from Dystopia lived there, which was fucking awesome. Like one of my idols. That's sick. Fucking lived there for a while. Um, Charlie lived there. Uh, a few other people lived there. It was fucking. It was really cool to, to learn that. And then also JP lived there. I don't know. A lot of people know JP. He like he died in that house, and we're pretty sure like his ghost was haunting that house for a while. <clears throat> for a while because like. A bunch of weird shit happened, like my friend had strange dreams of like people like haunting him and just a bunch of weird shit. So we're walking right now into Extreme Nights to try and sell some more of Wilder's magazine. Uh, ice is fuck out, which sucks, but whatever. So, right here in this weird little shop next to us is the old location of the TC Underground, which used to be a underground punk venue for like teenage kids. I used to go there all the time when I was a kid, super wild. <laughs> so, you've been working at The Noise for about a year? Yeah. And you like it? Yeah, I fucking love it here. That's awesome. And you used to live where? Like some of the houses you've lived at? Um, I've lived at the Witch's Den and the Hoosier Tub. Um, and now I just live at a house without a name. <laughs> just like, you should just call it that. The house without a name. It went by the West Bend house for a minute. Right. I don't know. And uh, how many people do you have living at like Witch's Den and shit at one time? Like, I know there's quite a people, quite a few packed in there for a little bit. Uh, um, I think the most we ever had while I was there was seven, but then at one point we had three dogs and two cats and shit like that. So. Why would you want to work at a place like The Noise? Um, just because I have really fond memories, like TC Underground used to be right next door, and every Friday night... Dude, I miss TC Underground yeah, so much. Yeah, fuck yeah, like being 14, and every Friday night come and see my like friend's shitty pop punk bands and ska bands play, <laughs> and then I... Yeah, yeah and then I come next door and I would buy studs and hair yeah. dye and Dude, just like I was right there. Yeah, I bought like some of my first records here and just it's been a really important part of like being a Minneapolis punk for me. Just like having a place where I can buy music and find music and like you can get local music here. Like and that's fucking awesome. I'm, I'm running into a dilemma right now. Oh fuck, my foot just got soaked. <laughs> so we're currently outside of Uptown Pizza. We just uh, dropped off some more of Wilder's uh, zines over at Extreme Noise, so... Well right now, I don't know. Either I'm gonna go over to Lake Wine and Spirits over there, buy some beer, 
or use the money to get a piece of pizza. So it's pretty much just like food or beer. I don't know. Empty don't know calories. I mean, the beer fills you up anyway. This is true. And How it gets you fucked up. I, I mean, I was gonna get fucked up on pizza, but. Well, so far I've made a dollar fifty off of my zines. It's not about the money. It's about the fame. <laughs> I have nothing to say. I just want to say, um, what's up, world? <laughs> um, I feel very, very blessed to be a part of this documentary because I feel like it's going to be one of those things that everybody's going to be like, oh, have you seen Matt's documentary? Oh, you haven't? Well, you're fucking stupid. So, <laughs> I'm glad I'm one of the smart ones who is a part of it. This is how Wilder parks his car. Over the line. Over the line. Dude, you're, you're, over, beautiful. you're always over the line, man. Always. So, we're heading into the wedge right now to try and <laughs> ditch out some more of the zines. And we'll, we'll see what happens. So, that was a failed attempt at zine selling, unfortunately. Well, but it's just a process. I guess I have to like contact the manager, and I have to send them an email, and then they have to set up like some sort of interview, all to sell a fucking one dollar zine. Seems a bit ridiculous to me. So, right now we are walking into the Electric Fetus, which is a classic, iconic Minnesota record store. They don't fucking suck. Yeah, they don't really cater much to the punk crowd and shit, but this place still has a pretty good history behind it. Okay, I gotta fill this out. What's the... Um, let's see, we'll start with something like, say, five? Uh, could I sell, like, three? Sure, I'm, I'm whatever, whatever you want to do. Uh, to call it out of context? Yep. So, we just sold how many? Three. Three records. Dude. That girl in there, she's such a goddess. She's so beautiful. That blonde? <laughs> I should have filmed her. <laughs> Get the camera off me, man. Film her. So, we are cruising on our way right now to Hard Times, and we're on 35 right now. Cruising past the beautiful downtown Minneapolis skyline. Um, yeah, fucking Hard Times, man. Talk about Hard Times for a second. I love Hard Times. When I was homeless, I would spend hours on end there making art and eating food and drinking coffee and so many of my friends hang out there like it's just kind of like a like a meeting place for me and my friends like I can just go there and I know that there's gonna be people there that I that I will know so I don't know hard times is fucking awesome I remember last year I went to their their birthday party and it was one of the best shows I've well not one of the best but it was a really fucking good show like Ashen played um, a couple other bands played. I guess it wasn't that good because I'm not remembering it, but it, I remember it being a really good time and getting really wasted and meeting a lot of really cool people. I don't know, I love Hard Times. So we just pulled up to Hard Times Cafe, which has been around for fucking ever. Uh, if there's anywhere that's gonna sell a shit ton of magazines, it's definitely here. This place is all volunteer run. It's fucking great. They're open till like four in the morning. They're mostly vegetarian. And I think they're all vegetarian. They're close two hours. Two hours of every day. Here's the hour at 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's been like two weeks since I've been here. Yeah, it's been about maybe two or three for me. I came here and I got some tofu, like a scramble like a week ago or something. Um, that helps. I don't know. And then also, what will happen is uh, you either get the money for what you sold after a year or after they all sold out. Okay. So we'll like give you a call if they're all out of the case. And then we'll be like, hey man, come pick up your cash, you're gonna pay out. Alright. You have to bring in your copy of the invoice. Okay. Right, we'll Sounds good. Uh, so if you just want to fill out your 
like how many items there are total and you know how we get all of you. All right. Onwards and upwards. Thanks, man. The Bedlam? Are they reopening it? I guess so. Wild, man. The Bedlam started out as a weird little show space over on Cedar Riverside, about four blocks away from here next door to a bar called Palmer's. But after it went under, they opened up a new one, uh, literally right across the block from this place now called Medusa. Medusa! What's up, Mike? I got two zines left. One of them I'm going to mail to someone. The other one I was going to give to the Seward, but I think they're closed right now, so I guess that's it for the day. It's pretty successful. So we just officially wrapped up our day with, with Wilder, ah, getting rid of all of his zines and shit. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I never really thought about how to like start or end any of this except for the fact that I just, I want to document everything that me and my friends do here in this town, because this town's fucking great. It's the best city. And we all love it. And I think, you know, we wouldn't exist without all the places that we've gone to today. We have so many good memories, and like so much shit in those places has evolved us as people. And it's just really enlightening. So I guess thanks for taking the time to watch this piece of shit. But as a whole, I think me and Wilder are equally ex as excited for getting all this done. Yeah, and don't forget, check out my zine. You can pick it up at Hard Times. You can pick them up at the Wedge, hopefully, pretty soon. Uh, there's a few copies at X Noise. Uh, it's called Out of Context. Check it out. It's going to be fucking rad. Good time. Party. Blech.